evening, everyone. I'm going to call this meeting to order. The Development Review Board for the City of Montpelier is now in session for this Monday, October 21st, 2019. My name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as the chair. The other members of the board from my right are Rob Goodwin, Kevin O'Connell, uh, Michael Lazorchak, Meredith Crandall, staff, Kate McCarthy. Okay. First item of business is approval of the agenda. We have one item of business. Uh, as far as applications are concerned, 18 Marvin Street. Does anybody have any additions or amendments to the agenda as printed? If not, I'll take a motion to approve the agenda as printed. So moved. Motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Rob. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We have an agenda. There are no comments from the chair this evening, other than I will make this sort of general observation and note which is that we are a five, usually a seven member board. We currently have a five members before you because of absences, um, but the vote will still have to be four in favor to approve the application. That doesn't change the, the threshold requirement for voting. Um, the applicant, because of the um, less than full contingency of the board, has, of course, the option to continue this to another evening um, if the applicant so wishes. But I will simply note that in doing so, that's really a single choice. It's not a let me get the temperature of the board, let me get a measurement of everyone's feelings. It's a I would like to wait or I would like to go forward kind of question. So I'll just simply note that that's there simply because we do not have the full contingency and uh, but we do have plenty to review and we only need four to four to approve uh, based on the normal seven member membership so mr chairman i clarify that point yes um is it necessary for the applicant to make that decision about whether to continue before presenting evidence or can the applicant go through the process of presenting the project and then choose to continue. What is the order of operations for it, that decision? It, it can happen any time before we close the record, um, simply because we would. Um, but once we close the record and really take the matter under advisement, or you know start to move into a motion, then it's too late. But up until then, the applicant has the ability to do so. And I simply offer that. that some applicants go forward. Um, and have no problem with five people. Some applicants um, wish that full contingency. It's certainly their right, and we've offered it before in the past. But thanks for our clarification. First Thank item you. of business is uh, reviewing the minutes. Myself, Kevin, Kate, and Rob. So we have a foursome to review and approve the minutes. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes or additions? Mr. Chair, I move approval of the minutes of October 7th as printed. Okay, motion by Kate. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Rob. All those in favor of approving the October 7th minutes as, uh, as drafted, please raise your right hand if you're eligible. All eligible voted in favor, and the minutes are adopted. First item of business is 18 Marvin Street, Robert and Maria Proctor. If the applicant is here, please come forward to the table. One sort of technical note, be careful. Each of those little black um, rounded things are microphones, so just watch oh, where you put okay. the maps, otherwise we get a lot of feedback. Uh, and what I'll have you do is, um, before you start introducing some of those maps, if you just state your name for the record. Okay, sure. Robert Proctor. Okay. And Mr. Proctor, I'm going to put you under oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence and testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, is anyone else here to be heard on this particular application and is likely to speak? If you could just raise your hand. Um, here's what I'll do, um, given I will put individuals under oath when we ha take public comment or uh, comment from adjoining neighbors um, after the pri primary application. But 
don't speak until I have an opportunity to have your name on the record and then swear you in. Okay? Thanks. So, Mr. Proctor, um, go ahead and why don't you introduce, this is the second okay. round of the subdivision. This is the second meeting and um, it was recommended by the board that we... Um, you might want to stay by a microphone while you're talking. Oh, Sorry, okay. it's hard to multitask. <laughs> <laughs> it was recommended by the board that we have an engineer look at the property to see if there was any problem at all with uh, storm water coming off of it. And we used Grenier Engineering, Don Marsh, and he felt um, there are quite a few applications uh, which would handle the problem. And the one he thought might be best uh, was to run it to a storm water drain on the Turner's property of uh, which he did an outline of this. And at one point, um, we thought that the easement to do that might be necessary before we do this, but we were told uh, by Meredith and Tom that it's not really the right time to do it, and until the project or whatever anybody's gonna do on the property is decided, um, there are alternatives as to how to do that. But I do have copies of that drawing, which Meredith yeah. asked me to When you say Tom, you mean Tom McArdle, the yes. uh, Public Works Director. Yes. Uh, there are five or six of them there. Mind if you want to get So, Mr. Proctor, if I understand correctly, this uh, engineering drawing is illustrating what looks like um, a catch, a new catch basin. A new catch basin, That yes. would tie into an existing catch basin at the back of the uh, Turner property? Yes, I think, believe it's eight feet into the Turner property. There's a city storms uh, water drain. Okay, and then there looks like another sewer line is that right going in or is that an existing one i think that's an existing one i don't I, as far as as far as i'm sh recall there was only um one that was going to be well so it indicates a new sewer line um that would go to an existing manhole mm -hmm. and so that would be more for waste sewer waste as opposed to storm water runoff uh, no, there's a stormwater catch that will go to a, a stormwater drain on their property. But um, there were alternatives also, but uh, from speaking with Tom and Meredith and Dan, it was uh, said that the actual way of running the stormwater off should not be decided until there's an application to do something on the property itself, and we know what kind of... Mm -hmm. um, effect that will make whatever is being built or not being built. Right. No, I understand that's for the catch basin that's mm -hmm. illustrated in this picture. But just south of that, there's a, uh, what, a, a line with an S's in between, which usually indicates, in my experience, sewer, sewer lines. And it looks like it goes on to the Turner property to uh, a, what's called an SM. H, which I understand to be a sewer manhole. So I, I just want to be clear and understand that this is proposing to put a septic uh, the sewer line um, across the Turner property as well to an existing town sewer manhole line. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not sure if, if, if that's correct or not. Um, the city said there was no problem running a sewer line in, in, um, to it, and I, I don't remember Don telling me that there was a new sewer line um, there. Can I, I just, I, I had an email from Don today, so this might help a little bit. Because okay. he references both the sewer and the stormwater connections there, but that they're options. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I, I, I can't remember if Tom's email said it exactly. I mean, there are there is a sewer line running down Marvin Street, mm -hmm. so a builder would have the option of having a pump system to pump up the storm line in Marvin Street. It just would be more expensive, potentially, at least with the mechanics of it. But there also isn't an actual easement signed for the Turner property yet. But these are all options. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, they're all technically feasible. It's what exactly a new owner or, you know, the right. proctors or some other developer would actually decide to do with this based on whether or not they could get an easement. Um, and it's it's a sort of a money question okay. more than a technical feasibility. And also the, uh, the city told us that they can tie the regular sewer line into the line that runs from 18 Marvin Tree, which does not pump up to Marvin. It actually goes back that way. They said it's a big enough uh, pipe to go to tie into that if they mm -hmm. wanted to. Just to understand, uh, the, the scope of our role is to, is to make sure that when this, when and if this lot is subdivided, that it mm -hmm. can be developed safely. And so what we're hearing is that there isn't only one way to handle sewer, and there isn't only one way to handle um, stormwater. There are multiple ways, That's such that the easement would be one option, but if the easement doesn't pan out, Right, there was something could be called other a, options. a rain garden in the back that's yeah. possible. There's pumping the water up. There were, Don said there's even more options if we need to look at it, okay. depending on what is developed there okay. at some point. All right, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Kate. Okay. You're welcome. Um, so, one other question that I had, which was in regards to the there's an exhibit here in our packet that mm -hmm. looks like it was presented, and it's the City of Montpelier Permanent Easement for S Storm and Sewer Line. Um, that looks to illustrate um, the properties along Liberty Street that about Marvin Street. Um, the and they're looks as if there's an easement going through the back of them. Yeah, this is, I, okay. I just want to, if you don't mind, because yeah, I please. added this in. Okay. I added this in to help clarify Tom McArdle's comments because he references this permanent easement. And if suddenly people started asking questions about it, I wanted to make sure this was in here. Okay. Um, because the, the permanent easement you know, if, if somebody was like, oh, well, how far does the permanent easement go? Does, you know, can, can the proxy property actually reach to it without having to get a private easement or anything? Mm -hmm. And they, they would still have to get a private easement over the Turner property, which on this um, older document is signified by the R Richard Provost property. Okay. Um, because the easement so doesn't the, run along the property line. Right, which would the easement be the doesn't run along the property line. It's okay. quite a ways in. Um, so right. I just, I put it in here for clarification because Tom had referenced it. Right. Well, that's helpful. I, I, that's actually predicting the questions that I was gonna have as to, you well, know. I had the same questions. So, so just so we're, we're clear that to do what Don Marsh has proposed is one option, mm -hmm. which is to run the lines, the storm and sewer lines back to the permanent easement would require permission from the Turners? Yes. Okay. And that is not something you're presenting today as something you've already obtained? No. I was actually told by Meredith and Tom that at this point that shouldn't be something we bring to this meeting because it isn't pertinent to a subdivision. Well, it, yeah, it was more along the lines of if, if you hadn't gotten it, it wasn't, it wasn't a huge issue because there are other options for dealing with the stormwater in the sewer. So it wasn't necessary for tonight. Right. If you had it, great. If not, then it wasn't. It, it wasn't necessarily, you know, going to be a huge red check against the application. <laughs> it, it would have been an issue if it was the one and only option. Yeah. To get yes, rid of your so stormwater and yes. since there's yeah. some different options. 
so and just to be clear we're talking about multiple options for both the stormwater runoff and to list a few there's the option number one that um, Don Marsh has laid out in this Grenier engineering design uh -huh. but there's also the possibility of a rain garden there's also the possibility of pumping uh, the water up pumping the water up um, or designing changing the the layout of the land is that the other possibility to how it conquers uh, i don't know what he mentioned there are other possibilities also okay. he wasn't really clear with me as to what those would be he said the best thing is to see what kind of thing is going to go in there and what it would require okay. at that time and but then there could definitely be done it's not a problem okay and then the sewer options would be as Don has laid out, uh -huh. or bringing it up to Marvin Street at one of two points. Yes. One might require a pump, and one might not. Exactly. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, they also the city also said they could tie into the line we have there now. Now that I don't know the exact uh, how that would exactly be done, but they said as long as it's over a five-inch pipe that runs from the house on 18 Marvin Street now, it's no problem to put another one on it. And that is a six inch pipe. Okay. Oh, so to tie into your existing yes. line. So they would share one single line. Okay. Um, does anyone have any other questions about stormwater or, or sewer? Okay. I'll note, uh, just sort of as a as a preliminary, I, we reviewed this last time, but a lot of the general standards as far as the setbacks, size of the lot, potential coverage, um, all seem to have been met by this particular design, which is we wouldn't have an issue with creating a building in the setback as the only possible place to put a building or that any building is likely to over be oversized on the lot as far as its percentage of coverage. A lot of these sort of minor um, but important technical issues. The next big issue um, was the let's see, uh, actually the sh the driveway. So, what is the proposal for the the driveway for this lot? Uh, the proposal right now, which we which we had a drawing done of is to share the driveway with 18 Marvin there now. Um, uh, perhaps extend the cutback a little bit on on the street or not, depending on the construction of it. Okay. So it would be, and I'm, I'm looking at, well, I think I'll go off of the engineering design that you showed, but it shows okay. a single driveway on 18 Marvin and then the other driveway would would come off of of that run right next to it exactly another 15 feet okay. so is the current curb cut 22 feet wide um, and the recommendation of the staff is that that be narrowed actually by two feet to 20 20 feet I, as I a curb cut. I did read cut. something about that. I didn't know if that was um, why that was. That I did read that that Tom said, Tom said that, I believe. Yeah, that was from Tom McArdle. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have any objection to that being a condition that that be reduced? And, and the reason, as I understand from Tom McArdle's report, is that 22 feet or anything wider than that is too much. It's too big of a, an opening. And the idea is to make yeah, you don't want too narrow of a driveway opening, but at the same time, you don't want too wide. Sort of a parking lot entrance, you know, this for right, especially for a residential. So what we're saying is just low, close that in by two feet. That's, right. We have no objection to that. Okay. Um, and there's a note that prior to construction, obviously, a final driveway design will need to be prepared and submitted. Yes. Because at this point, we have no intention of doing any right. construction. So. And the idea is that the asphalt curb line, gutter, and low-profile berm crossing the current driveway will be maintained as a design feature of the new expanded curb cut. Fine. That's fine. Okay. 
because of the topography of the land. I mean, I think that seems like an, something you would want as well. Yeah, so no, water I think that's the logical come. way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions on the parking, the uh, driveway entrance? Um, the parking itself is, doesn't raise any issues. The next effectively contested issue would be the utilities along um, and under our bylaws, the, there's a requirement that the applicant shall design the subdivision to provide utility service to each lot not intended for conservation purposes and to locate them underground and less prevented by ledge or other physical conditions. Yes, I spoke to the electric company about that. Okay. And I believe they submitted a letter that we have there. Uh, they have never done an underground utility in Montpelier. Uh, this, I believe, is a fairly new law and, hasn't, and has come in recently and was, uh, but they said it is feasible, of course. The difference in cost would be, actually, there's a grant from uh, the state, I believe, or, or perhaps it was the city, for putting in new electric where they grant you $500, so it would only cost about $100 to connect to the above ground things there. They said to do the underground, it's feasible to do, it would be about $575, if I remember correctly, but they don't actually run it underground. You would have to get a private contractor to dig a trench four feet, cover it with cement all the way around, and you'd be looking at five to $10,000. But they said it's never been done in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. they, so they didn't really know too much about it. Well, they thought it was put in for new subdivisions somewhere, but I don't know. And I'm looking at a, a, a picture of uh, Marvin Street that's in our staff report that appears to be facing west, looking with your, your property, your existing property on the right-hand side of the picture. Um, and the utilities are all located on the left side across the street. So when they say locating under utilities underground, they're talking about digging up the street as well. Street, yeah. okay. Including the going under or however the sewer and the stormwater lines that run along that street right. and water lines. Interfering with that. And yeah. and your estimates are between five and ten thousand dollars as to opposed do, to, to do that as opposed to a hundred dollars. hundred or five hundred dollars. Okay. Any further questions from the board? Um, I mean that that seems consistent with what we've found with other applications and seem to make this less than feasible. Um, so let's talk about the um, landscaping. And in the landscaping, it says the applicant shall design the subdivision to maximize the preservation of existing mature veg vegetation, provide additional landscaping, which may be installed when the lots are subsequently developed as necessary to maintain and provide privacy, both for adjoining property owners and between the lots within the subdivision, to enhance the appearance of street frontage and shade trees and sidewalks, maintain or establish vegetated buffers along waterways and other natural areas, um, and utilize green stormwater infrastructure practices. So from the pictures that have been submitted, it looks as if the proposed site shows potential privacy fence and lilac bush located uh, along lot two's property boundaries for screening from the Im immediate neighbors as well as the road. Um, what is your proposal for the landscaping? Well, the landscaping, I, our, our proposal was to put the lilac trees up in the front to give privacy, but depending on and a privacy fence along the property <coughs> running for approximately 40 feet on the, on the, when you're looking at the property on the right side. There was a fence there in disrepair, which we've taken down and going to put a new one up there. But uh, the final landscaping was dependent on what's being done there, really. So, I mean, there's lots of options for, for landscaping. The back of the property has quite a few trees, which wouldn't be touched. And... Um, in the front, it would just be something very accommodating to how it's going to be built. Mm -hmm. is, is it the case when a building permit is applied for that landscaping is considered then as well? To a degree, mm -hmm. but if it's a single family home, the site plan regulations don't apply. Don't apply so, mm -hmm. what we've 
what what I think the board has done previously is just say that any future zoning permit application um, would need to include plans for meeting the landscaping and screening um, requirements of section 3506F1, 2, mm -hmm. and 4. Okay. Um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to lock you into five lilac bushes. Right. As, as no, much as I, I like that. lilacs. Yeah, we're not right. sure. um, and so, but, you know, you, you may want to have a front porch, you may want to have front steps that exactly. kind of interface with the Depending street and not hide. Yeah. And so yeah, I mean, and we also may want something on the left, excuse me, for, yeah. you know, where the driveways are to yeah. give some privacy. That depends yeah. on. Okay. Yeah. And this driveway plan is an option. Somebody else right. could purchase mm -hmm. one parcel and not the other and have a different driveway plan. Very sure. possible. So, would you have an objection if we made a condition that you know the landscaping plan, there would have to be a landscaping plan upon development of this lot. Such no objection at all. I think yeah, anybody who would want to do something would want to right. do some landscaping for sure. And that this would have to meet our requirements, um, and that we would we would need to review that. Yes, that's fine. Or the mm -hmm. administratively. I, yeah, I think previously it's. I don't think we've said that it has to come back before the DRB. Yeah. As long as you know, if it, if it gets to a question of whether or not it actually complies, the zoning administrator should be sending it up here if they can't make that judgment right. call. Do you have a problem with no, no objection to okay. Um, so I will note that, you know, it does appear from the photographs and just to make sure these are accurate that the front of the property does not have a lot of trees right now it appears to be open. Uh, not a lot. There's, uh, I, b I believe, one tree and some uh, smaller growth also. Okay, but that most of the trees are in the back of the lot yes, towards the larger trees are the towards trees. the rear and the Liberty Street lots that abut. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so the next question is uh, character of the neighborhood and settlement pattern. Um, okay. How is this lot? How are you proposing this lot to be marketed? Is is it residential or commercial? Or I think I think it would be residential. Uh, I don't know. I haven't even looked into whether commercial is available. That or not. It's not something that entered my mind. Um, I know that Kate last time uh, <coughs> mentioned this. The uh, imprint could be twenty five hundred square feet on that type of zoning. It's not something that. I have any plans to do or not do, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I, and I, I believe, um, um, if I'm not mistaken, you said also that it, it could be zoned duplex or something else, but I'm not really sure what this It was I'm a 6,000 square of foot head. college area. And since I'm not That's really interested in developing it myself, I didn't look into all the details mm -hmm. of what could be done there. Sure. So, sure. so the 6,000 feet you're referring to is that in this in this zoning district, the minimum lot size is 6,000 square uh -huh. feet. You're proposing a lot that is that is larger yes, than that. Yes, 500 square feet. Um, the footprint of the building may be up to 2,500 square feet, um, with a maximum height of 35 square of 35 feet, and then all within the setbacks and everything, with 50% mm -hmm. coverage of the lot. So. There is a lot of flexibility. Yeah. I don't know off the top of my head if duplexes are allowed in this area. It um, probably says right in here. You can you can have up to two dwelling units on any parcel, irrespective of density. There you go. So this could be developed in a number right. of ways. Yeah. But you're looking to just market this as a piece of raw land that the person purchasing it would develop consistent with the zoning bylaws. Yes. Or if if. If in the future we decided to build a house on there, we would certainly just go with a small, even smaller than 2,500 square foot, uh, you know, very private type of house. If it was something we did, but at this point we have no intention right. to do that. Um, you know, I will note that this does create a, a logical um, rectangular lot. Um, you currently have an L-shaped lot that sits with a lot of frontage along Marvin Street and then right. dips back on this lot, but is more shallow where your existing home is yes. located. Um, and that at the end of this, there'll be 
two roughly, you know, one's a little bit more trapezoidal in shape, but uh, logical rectangular lots. And this is consistent with what the city has promoted as far as infill, taking a lot that your current lot is well in excess of the, the minimum lot size of this. And that as a result, there'll be a second building lot to build in an existing neighborhood. Yes. That if built in conformance with the zoning would effectively allow for greater density within this existing neighborhood. Yes. I just also know, I think I recall from the sketch plan hearing, we had testimony that um, this was actually once two lots. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And so basically you're just maybe slightly reconfiguring uh, that. And, I um, think it's almost along the exact same exactly. lines what right. um, mm -hmm. yeah. Richard Bell did in the surveys. Right. Is mm -hmm. what was there before. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any further questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Proctor, any, if anything further that you wish to uh, offer in no. the testimony? Okay. You'll, you'll have an opportunity, obviously, if there's further questions. Um, at this point in time, I think it makes sense to have any of the. We have, oh, I, have one more, I have one more question no. just to clarify on the uh, on the sewer. So the connection, you have two connections on Marvin Street as a possibility. One going through the existing house lot. Mm -hmm. The second would be going directly to Marvin and not crossing the existing house, the house yes, lot. Yes, to pump up from from this lot directly to Marvin Street. Yeah, and then th there's actually a third, Rob. They, if they got an easement over the Turner land, they could also go downhill. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh. It, does, it doesn't appear that that was a possibility it's, at this point in time. But, um, I don't know. So for technical, technical, not speaking of what has been legally agreed to, for technical reasons, sure. you know, for DPW's possibilities and engineering possibilities, those three separate engineering mm -hmm. possibilities. Right. And, you know, part of our job as subdivision is not necessarily to come in and scrutinize any particular easements that are necessary but you know the to take the applicant's representations and experts as this is a possibility so that you know if the subdivision was granted you know it could be it could be built upon but of course if if they choose not to it won't um, but that's a private legal matter as to those type of issues um, our goal mainly being not to grant a non-conforming lot Absolutely. or one that is likely to fail <coughs> so and any further questions good uh, so if anyone from the audience uh, or the attendants wish to speak what I'd ask is that you go to the microphone introduce yourself I'll swear you in and then if you have questions if you have a statement um, We'll take them as they come. Good evening. My name is Martha Smirsky. I live at um, at 15 Marvin Street, directly across the street from the property that's existing. Um, I wrote a letter on June 29th. Oh, before. can I turn you in? Sorry. Yeah. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under a pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Thank you. I wrote a letter on the 29th of June indicating my objection to the subdivision. Um, I had basically two concerns, one being the drainage issue, another being a driveway issue. The one thing that we haven't heard anything about here tonight is the slope of this property. One of the things that I brought up in my original le letter was the fact that this se the section that they're considering subdividing sits very far down below the street level here. In order to actually build on that property, I would assume that one would have to be bringing in a lot of fill. As the board knows, some other s properties in this area have been built with fill, and they have not been successful. I'm specifically thinking about one on Bingham Street, where the fill actually started to erode, leaving the slab, the slab that the house was built on hanging in the air in one area. Um, I have a lot of concerns about that. Um, it is a tight neighborhood, and knowing that, that that house would have to come up significantly in order to be accessible to the street is one of my concerns. Also, this, tonight we've heard about a shared driveway, which is directly across from my property. Um, 
I'm not sure how that could work given the slope of the land. Um, we, we do have problems with drainage in our area. It's extremely heavy clay. Um, and when it is heavy April weather, um, we do have problems with water. And I think that's important to note too. Good, thank you. Uh, Mr. Proctor, do you have any uh, uh, I do. further testimony? Don, Don which Marsh looked at, looked at the property and the engineering things as he was looking for the stormwater drain. He said it's absolutely no problem to build on the flat area there. Now, I'm not an engineer, but he's, that's what he, he said. There's no problems building there at all. And depending on what you would build would depend on how you did the stormwater runoff. Mm -hmm. uh, Right now, there's there's nothing there for the stormwater runoff, and he didn't. Depending on what went in there, might might affect it, and it might not. You know, but you you would go along with it. But as far as building, he said there's a big flat area that's perfect for building. Okay. So you and Mr. Marsh did not discuss fill being no fill a necessity. At all. No, not a necessity. Even for the sake of accessing it between getting out of your car or for, for functioning of the driveway or for movement for of people of between the driveway, the driveway or the house itself. Or the functioning maybe. of the driveway now, you might, which we have there now, there are a few steps that go down to mm -hmm. that area and mm -hmm. you could do that all. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I mean, that would be ultimately the decision of the person installing this if they, if they chose to put in fill or if to raise the level up. That's what that's what I I, I think you know and, and as uh, I don't remember who said it it's possible to even move the driveway if they wish to do it to a different location uh, that's a possibility depending on what they do. Go ahead. If you just state your name and I'll swear you're in. I'm Michelle Braun. I live at 21 Marvin Street. Michelle, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Very good. Please. Um, so I love the suggestion of moving the driveway to a different location that <laughs> Bob just made. Uh, the driveway where it's proposed, if it's shifted toward Bingham Street and widened, it then, as it's shown on that site plan, then aligns exactly with my driveway, which is not shown on the site plan, but is, you know, a, on the opposite side of the street. Mm -hmm. um, we already have a hard time with people um, visiting 18 Marvin Street parking smack at the end of our driveway. It makes it really hard to get in and out. Um, along, so, is that along the public street that they do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, which, you know, if you put a driveway there, maybe they would go in the driveway and they'd be less in the way. Um, but it seems like putting the driveway at the flatter side of the parcel would mean less conflict with our driveway and also just a more accessible space because it's flatter. Um, and I, it sounds like Bob and um, Mr. Marsh did not talk about fill, but Tom McArdle in his discussion of the driveway did say that in order to place it where it's proposed, there would be fill required right so okay um That's all. oh and rain garden keeps coming up i am of course a huge proponent of rain gardens but um in that location in that soil it's not going to help the turners so i would go with one of the other solutions okay thank you and could i ask a clarifying question um so is, is is your idea that the, the proposed parcel would ultimately have its own driveway developed as opposed to a shared? I, I want to ask what was the, about the, the witness testimony just now. Oh, so she's um, Ms. Come up Ms. Brown. Yeah. 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 Um, so so we, when you said put it on the flat part instead, right. do you mean give the new parcel its very a own separate driveway? driveway? Yes. Separate access. Okay. A separate access at the um, more easterly okay. side of the parcel. Okay, and if we're talking about the a shared driveway option, I just want to make sure I understand this. We're talking about more intensive use of an existing driveway. Right. And so is that a stormwater issue or a intensive or a traffic issue? Traffic. Okay. 
I mean, so it, your suggestion to move it to the flat doesn't have to do with stormwater or fill. It has right. to do with coming and going. Right. It's traffic. I mean, honestly, I think that adding fill in this area and expanding the driveway this way would probably not be helpful in terms of stormwater impact to the house. Mm -hmm. So maybe when somebody actually gets to the point of designing a house to go in here, they would come to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of my personal interests, mm -hmm. it's traffic. Okay. And is, is the traffic about cars turning out and cars turning in on a daily basis because once right. once the driveway is built and the cars are in yeah they're out of this they're out of the way they're, they're out off of the, the way street. yes so we're talking about what five or ten trips coming a day? and going yeah okay well and i also okay. understood too that so part of your concern was just the number of cars um that plenty of space for visitors or right so that people wouldn't park in front of your driveway creating hardships for you right is the other concern yeah, I mean, it's not the world's biggest hardship. It just makes it hard to get in and out. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. so just a quick little reminder yep. about the access. Um, this subdivision permit doesn't necessarily, it, it doesn't grant like a zoning permit or anything for this particular driveway design. An actual driveway construction permit would need to be required. Sure. So there's, there's options sure. here as to how, and this is not just for the board, but also for right. people visiting here and, and attending today that um, you know this is again a a being able to show that there is a permittable driveway mm -hmm. an access point it doesn't necessarily mean that this is what's going to happen for the driveway unless right. the board says this is what you must do yeah, that that <laughs> would need to be developed as a plan an actual plan right that for development of the site for a zoning permit right. and so a, it, a it, department it, of public works it's permit. important to emphasize mm -hmm. that point that this proceeding this evening is for the subdivision and it does not impact the design of the building or a building and any of the uh, accessories such as a driveway that would go with it. Yeah. So, and, and unless just, the board decides it does. Right, unless <laughs> the board decides it does. Um, so at, so we're, we're, we're saying something's possible, we're not designing it. At the point when design of the driveway or a building on the lot begins to happen, are neighbors notified at that time and have the opportunity to comment? It's an administrative it, review, if so it's I'm wondering. it's an administrative review, they don't necessarily get that. Um, I mean, there is the possible people people can come in and say, "Hey, we want to mm -hmm. we want to be notified of anything that happens with S X property." Mm -hmm. um, it's a little hard administratively to. Sure. To keep that all up, but that yeah. is a possibility. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking. What's and the happen? board, I mean, the board can require that development on a property come through here, but I'm not sure that mm. this makes this is not the type of property that sure normally the board that would. Level. Yeah, that the right. board would yeah. do that with. Yeah. I'm just trying but, to. It's always easier to comment on a specific design than a hypothetical design, exactly. and that makes a better conversation for everybody. So yeah, I'm just trying right. to yep. identify where those conversation points could actually happen. So yeah. kind of what you're saying. I mean, not that that I guess it's not written in gold, you said it could come before the board, but generally when someone does a zoning plan and tells you what they're gonna build, it's not in the same format we're using now. We don't come sit before you. Not not for not for a single family home or even a two mm -hmm. unit. Right. But that would be something that would just go administratively in most instances unless there's some other triggering factor. Right. However, you know, part of this process is to hear the comments of your neighbors mm -hmm. and concerns, and so that's a valuable process. So you've you've heard testimony uh, uh, and concerns about you know what what a shared driveway will look like. I'll, I'll know at the same time. I mean, our bylaws do encourage shared driveways. Mm -hmm. So I remember as a general that policy, that it's something you like. It's, it's not something you know. It's not something where you must have a shared driveway, but it's definitely encouraged as a you know as a general rule. That said, if it makes more sense to have a, a separate driveway for other reasons and other site-specific conditions. There's nothing in the bylaws that prevent that. Um, it's just in some ways to avoid, um, you know, I, I think in some ways we, you know, we recognize that every house needs a driveway. Um, we're not at the point of flying cars or trains um, yet. And so uh, every house has to have some sort of driveway access. 
and what's the best way to do it that keeps somewhat of a natural appearance, natural being a somewhat loaded word, um, but one that doesn't maybe avoids a cookie cutter Levittown look to the right. to the street. But as uh, you were saying, actually, uh, Tom recommended even bringing the curb cut in a little bit. So I don't know that it would create more. I, you know, I think part of the problem is is that we're talking in hypotheticals. We're talking, but I think your neighbors, have, uh, you know, have expressed concerns. Mm -hmm. One of the concerns is about Phil and you know the dangers of phil mm -hmm. that you know that that said there's phil everywhere in the city you know being in a river valley we we have a lot of lots that are built on phil um some hold well some do not some are done well and some are not um you know obviously the problem is is when you bring in phil you have to make sure it's a good quality and it's done right and erosion measures are taken so that the fill does not suddenly wipe out and end up in the turner's backyard or somewhere else and your house is now teetering um you know those are all those are all concerns but those are more mechanical concerns than our larger zoning concerns um and how that's done um, but obviously if it's something where you can avoid it um you know those are those have been laid out there um and it's it's in the interest of both you as the applicant as well as the neighbors to you know hear each other and listen to those concerns and um understand where they come from anyone else wish to uh express either any sort of questions or issues good all right well um with that does the board have any other follow-up questions how do we wish to proceed we have two options one is to close the record and take a vote uh now or we can move into deliberative session um which would also be closing the record but would give us an opportunity to talk through some of the conditions and issues that have been raised by uh, this application as well as any of the uh, comments and feedback that we've received throughout this process. Just Mr. Chair, I would propose that we close the record and move to deliberative session so that we can be very specific and succinct in um, our evaluation of the evidence submitted and that we can respond adequately to the uh, issues that have been raised uh, uh, here tonight. Okay. I'll take that as a motion, Kevin. Um, do I have a second? Second. And I have a second by Kate. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of closing the record and moving us into deliberative session, please raise your right hand. All right, the record is closed. We're going to move into deliberative session. We're going to review the evidence. What will happen is we'll issue a decision after this deliberative session, not tonight. So don't stick, you don't, please don't stick around. Uh, <laughs> you have better things to do with your evening. Um, but there will be a written decision that will be issued and uh, will reflect uh, our considerations. So thank you all very much for participating and have a good evening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. You. So going back to the agenda, um, there are no other applications. I'll just simply make a note of other business before we go into the deliberative session that our next meeting date is November 4th, 2019, and it will be at 7 p.m. That is the first Monday in November. Any other business? Yes, I'd like to mention once again for our friends in TV land that we would love to have you join us here in person as part of this board and we're seeking an alternate as well as a permanent member so there are two positions open please apply thank you good <laughs> thank plug you, Thanks. thank you <laughs> thank you thank you very much all right with that we'll may we'll move into deliberative session as the motion has requested thank you very much yeah.